Welcome to Western Glory. This is the second video about the construction of uh, my layout. We're a month on from the first video, towards the end of July 2017 now. And uh, there's four tracks up and running. So I'm going to give you a guided tour of um, the situation as it stands at the moment. One of the things I said I was going to do in this uh, video was to uh, give you an overall picture of the layout and um, this is the plan for the this part of the layout in the old stable. Um, on the left there will be uh, four lines um, which will come round in a complete oval um, so those two uh, ends on the left will join each other. Uh, on the right we've got Bristol Temple Meads and you'll see in the bottom right that uh, I've included the old Great Western Terminus. Um, yet to decide exactly how I'm going to use it but I might well use it for uh, the Blue Pullman and uh, possibly if I ever buy the Hitachi 600 set um, I might use it for that. The platforms uh, will be long enough for a six car set. Um, the basic platforms at Bristol Temple Meads will be much as in, on the real thing. Um, and I'll be looking to build the overall roof over the uh, over the platforms on the right there with the four lines running through them. Um, Top in the middle, Bristol, uh, Bath Road, um, Bristol Motor Power Depot. Um, I haven't quite decided on the plan of that. The um, the building that's there on the plan at the moment is the one that um, you can gain access to the Motor Power Depot from Bath Road. But of course there's another, uh, there's a servicing shed, um, which I haven't put on the plan, which I'm... Uh, in hindsight, I, I think I'd be looking to uh, try and model that, but um, that would be uh, at a future date. So this baseboard on the left will be where Bath Road MPD will be, and then as this will be the south end of the station, there'll be a large girder bridge where that white mark is across the uh, join the baseboards um, and then we'll run into Bristol Temple Meads this is the baseboard for Bristol Temple Meads um, there's a, a seven coach train in there now so uh, the platforms I've isolated the track so it would be possible to have as Bristol Temple Meads is these days um, split into the main um, platforms, a longer platform split into two, so I could have uh, a shorter train at each end or a longer train across the whole platform. Um, and there's enough room there for the um, all the platforms that exist in reality. The overall roof will be over here um, and perhaps um, I'll try and model the, the building with the, the tower um, for uh, four little pinnacles on it, um, the station building, and then you've got those two tracks will be under what will be um, a pitched roof to try and model, get an essence of what the Brunel's roof was in that section, uh, the old station. And now we've got the north end of the station here, a few trains in there at the moment. Um, here you can see that the, sorry I've got the dog barking outside, you can see here there's four tracks in the middle there. Those are level, it's deceptive, um, but there'll be a track, or two tracks in fact, this side where some of these uh, accessories are, and bits of concrete sleeper track are used at the moment, uh, and one track at the back there that will run down and the track this side will go underneath the baseboard there, underneath the four tracks, sorry. Uh, they'll join up together and those will then carry on around and will go into 
um, the shed adjoining the stable where Paddington will be. That will be the access to Paddington on this side of the baseboard. Um, and on this side, in similar fashion, you've got the four tracks in the middle. Again, they are level. Um, but the baseboard either side drops down and you'd have one track either side going down towards Paddington. I've tried to keep the slope as gentle as possible. Um, it's about... Um, sorry about that, I had to do a bit of uh, calculating but I failed. <laughs> it's about a drop of about four inches in old money in about 12 feet. It's a fairly gentle slope. Um, I've yet to find out of course if that will pose a problem for some of the steam locomotives I've got. Um, the diesels I'm sure will be fine. Um, <laughs> Bearing in mind how many uh, driven wheels they've certainly they've got on the Helgen and the Dapol Westerns, and of course the old Lima um, locos have got rubber tyres, so sure they shouldn't have a problem either. Most of the time, the the trains are going to be about six or seven coaches. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, um, these days the heaviest working over the Devon banks. Um, in Devon and Cornwall is the uh, the motor rail service so we might have a, a longer train the motor rail service might be a longer slightly longer one we'll see so over this section um, as we come out of Bath Road motor power depot um, the the girder bridge going over the, the what will be six tracks will be like a scenic break um, and like I said in the first video, I'm trying to get the essence really of the, of the Western region or the Great Western Railway. Um, so the idea was to try and model in some fashion uh, sonning cutting um, going along here with the, the two um, well-known bridges over there. Um, as you come along here, one of the bridges only spans three tracks and then um, there's another arch. So that's why there's a, a gap there. And then the tracks, um, the two tracks, there's a gap and another another two tracks. Well, there'll be a, a tunnel entrance here and maybe a staggered entrance. There'll be another tunnel entrance about there. So this will all be in a tunnel. <laughs> this end, uh, where well, I've got this piece of paper, the idea is it's going to look a bit like the entrance to the west end of Box Tunnel. Uh, of course there's four tracks, um, I'm going to have to cheat a bit, but to, just to give that impression of Box Tunnel. Now this section here, you can see it looks like a bridge, well that's going to be um, effectively a, a model of, of Maidenhead Bridge. Um, the bridge spans and the height are very close to the dimensions of the bridge spans and height of Maidenhead Bridge in reality. I tried to model it, uh, the basics, uh, as closely as I can. Obviously, so that all this area here will be um, River Thames. So um, any ideas about best to model that? I was thinking of a sheet of glass, but that sounds dangerous. A sheet of plastic, clear plastic might, um, might do. Um, and then paint it underneath, I don't know got that challenge to come. And then further along here, between Bristol Temple Meads and this bridge section, um, it's going to run into a cutting, a short cutting, which will give an essence of, of Stanley Road, Stanley Garden, sorry, um, in Bath. Now I know there's a layout out there, or, uh, out there already of Stanley Gardens. I'm never going to do such a good job as them, I'm sure. But again, you know, to try and Get a bit of an essence of, of of what it is. So that's that's the um, that's in a nutshell what this section, the stable section of the layout, is going to be. So it is a is a very large oval um, size wise. Um, yeah, it's about um, eight meters by four meters overall, and a four track oval. I wonder what the collective term for a group of westerns is. 
uh, perhaps a brace of westerns, uh, perhaps I should be saying a glory of westerns. Um, got a model from different ages here, different times. At the back we've got uh, the Helgen model, Western Lord, and in front of that there's a Lima model, that's Western Talisman. In front of that another Lima model, it's Western Renown. And in the front here we've got the Dapo model, which is Western Cavalier. I can't decide between them really which is the best. Um, they've all got their good points. I know a lot of people would think that the Lima model is past its sell-by date now. Obviously there's not so much detail on it, although I suppose uh, somebody could spend some time on it and improve it. Um, they certainly run well, the Lima models. Powerful motor. Um, I haven't had any problems with the tyres really. Um, the Helgen model, and I was surprised actually, the motor's a little bit noisy, although very powerful, very heavy model. But that peak on the on the front is um, a bit off-putting. Um, I think the, the both the, the Lima model and the Dapo model capture that better. Um, I think I'll probably have to uh, do some work on the Lima models, um, perhaps get rid of the front coupling. Um, which I've done on the other models, and uh, put the brake pipes in, etc. The uh, Dapple model is probably the best, I think most people think that. Um, sorry if I'm offending anybody who prefers a Helgen one. Um, it's got a tremendous amount of detail, and it's, um, it's probably the best um, looking. Although I have to say that I like the Lima model because it has got a representation, perhaps, uh, albeit perhaps not that accurate, of the the brake uh, rods on the uh, on the axles, which I'm surprised that the um, you can't really fit the those items to the Helgen model or the Dapple model unless they're in a showcase, which is no good for me. Um, but we'll uh, we'll have a look at them on running around the track on the track now, shall we? The warships on a kind of fleet working. so far this Western Gladiator. YouTube has stubbornly refused to let me record more than 15 minutes in one video so please see video 3 now for continuation review of motive power on Western Glory. <laughs> 